Well, are you ready to talk about sex while you're at church? One Texas pastor called on married couples in his congregation to have sex every day for a week. The reaction was enthusiastic. <laughs> in fact, 1201, we've already started practicing. Uh, because so. <laughs> the Bible said so. That's okay. right. This is a great reminder to kind of clear the clutter out and really focus on my wife and our relationship. Pastor Ed Young and his wife Lisa, and you see them right there, they've written a book about this sex experiment. They're going to tell us what they and the couples in their church have learned from it. Well, how often is sex the main topic of conversation at your church, synagogue, or mosque? Several years ago, one Texas preacher called on married couples in his congregation to have sex every day for a week. Now, that pastor, Ed Young, and his wife, Lisa, are releasing a book based on the results of that challenge called Sexperiment. The purpose? Help couples reconnect and improve their marriages. Well, Pastor Young and his wife are joining me this morning from Dallas. Now, now I know both of you, this is amusing to a lot of us, but you're dead serious about this. When, <laughs> when you first issued this challenge to your congregation, I mean, did some people faint in the congregation? What was the reaction to it? <laughs> yeah, I think some people fainted, but basically the guys went nuts. They were so excited. They gave us a standing ovation. But then after the sex experiment had been going on for three or four days, we began to have incredible emails and in response from the wives. So it's been very, very well received. So that's why we're so excited about this book. We think this book will revolutionize marriages. Okay, I've read the book. Um, it's very interesting. And um, uh, one line I want to read well, to you. you. Yeah, one line I want to read to you. Tell me what this means. I mean, I think okay. I know what it means, but I want to hear it from both of you. We've kicked the bed out of church and God out of the bed. We need to bring the bed <laughs> back in the church and God back in the bed. Um, was God once in the bed? Are you saying God used to be in the bed? He should be back in the bed. Like, what you, it, 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 it sounds, to be honest with you, I mean, it's funny, but it sounds to some people I know yeah. sacrilegious. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that uh, for far too long the church has been silent about talking about a subject that God was not silent about. He certainly wasn't, um, is the author and creator of sex. So why would we not, in the context of church, speak about um, something that he was not bashful about? And we believe very strongly that the family unit is the number one place to talk about sex, and the church is the second best place to talk about sex. But Throughout church history, we find that um, you know the church has just been silent, and it's been a taboo subject. We've heard a lot of don't, 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 rather than how God says to do it, and do it in the context of His guidelines and guardrails. So basically, God said that, that, that we're to make love within the beauty and the covenant of marriage. So when the subject turns to sex in, in many churches, it's usually in the context of sin. What is the role of sex in a Christian marriage? I think the role of sex in a Christian marriage is the super glue that holds it together. The only relationship on planet Earth that's analogous to God's relationship to his people is marriage. So we feel like what happens inside the bedroom affects what happens outside the bedroom. What happens outside the bedroom affects what happens inside the bedroom. So when you have the freedom and the joy in a mutually satisfying sexual relationship, when you see it from God's perspective, I think the lights come on and you discover your destiny as husband and wife. Now, what are the biggest obstacles that you found the couples in your church are facing when they're <laughs> trying to make sex a priority in the wow. relationship and they're trying to have sex every day for seven days? I mean, I mean are people, I mean, I know that <laughs> there's some confidentiality here, obviously, but have some of your members had some problems with this? Yeah, some of our members have, and Lisa and I have as well. I think there are definitely barriers around the bed. For example, kids. I like to say kids means keeping intimacy at a distance successfully. Now, don't get us wrong. We love <laughs> yeah. our children. Yeah, we love them. We have four beautiful children, and uh, they're in their teen years now and older, but kids can create a problem with you know your scheduling and all the hectic pace of life so for Ed and I part of the uh, the negotiation for the seven day sex challenge is definitely working with our schedules and our children yeah I think also speaking of schedules just the NASCAR pace of life that tends to lead to a sexless marriage I think sickness I think people just not being in the mood so even, this even age yeah. 
Even age. age. Can have, you know, the older we get, um, you know, sometimes the libido <laughs> goes down a bit. But uh, in all seriousness, one of the things that many couples found challenging was the fact that they had uh, a lot of hurt and healing that needed to take place in their marriage. We're not asking people just to jump in the bed and start having sex, married couples to jump in the bed and have sex. We're saying that sex is bigger than most people ever imagine. It's uh, more multifaceted right. than people think of. And, th and most couples don't think deeply enough about sex. And so before you jump into the bed with your spouse, you might need to walk into a counselor's office to get some dialogue going and get things out on the table so that there's real healing. But what we do know is that sex, being multifaceted and being this, this spiritual side to it, it's not just a physical thing. It's a spiritual, emotional, physical um, all those things make it um, the beautiful thing that God created it to be, and couples should definitely enjoy it. Well, one That's more right. quick question for you, just a, a quick answer to this. Do you, are you positive, are you sure that the people in your church are healthier because of the health, healthier in religious ways, in emotional ways, and mental ways, because they participated in this experiment, or this sex experiment? I, you know, I definitely believe so. And we're so into this that Lisa and I are doing a bed in, we're sleeping on top of our church, for 24 hours starting on Friday, and we're doing a ginormous date night for couples to show everyone, hey, it's time to put the bed back in church and God back in the bed because God is the one who thought sex up. Sex begins in heaven. Okay, when you put that bed in the church, you might want to put up a curtain, you know, while you're up there. I, I know, know. The no, sex we're not, experiment yeah. will not have begun No, yet, no so. hanky-panky. <laughs> no hanky-panky. Just a statement. Okay. <laughs> Ed and Lisa Young, this was a very um, interesting and enlightening conversation. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.